as faithful catholics living in north america his excellency most reverend dr thomas mar of cbs is not a stranger to any of us we have seen him for past interviews too he has spearheaded the activities of the sudo malankara catholic church in north america for almost last 2 years he is also the one of the patrons for shalom media in north america the on behalf of the viewers of shalom tv we extend a warm welcome to dr thomas marov cbs thank, thank you, you very for much. your presence. thank you the uh, first question that comes to my mind with us is that uh, for almost the last 2 years of uh, your leadership in north america um, you have been guiding the sudo malankara catholics in this continent in your experience what are the challenges that you have faced and within the context of our secular culture here um, to put it plain and simple how tough do you think the battle is uh, challenges are many ours is a very new exarchate the faith for our present in this country since many decades we started our apostolic service with a canonical provision and foundation only since 2 years mm -hmm. so all the challenges that a, a new diocese experiences we are going through okay. we have a lot of limitations limitations of uh, infrastructure limitations of personnel even the limitation of the vastness of the country in the sense our parish of people are uh, spread out all over the country and so vast country the, the the possibility of reaching out okay. all these are there but coming contrary to the to the pastoral challenge i think the biggest challenge is our opposite to the youth uh, given the speciality of the culture we live in and given the background from where we come i think it is a very very uh, difficult apostolate mm -hmm. but at the same time a very very important apostolate and for me personally if i say in one sentence the the biggest responsibility and the biggest challenge uh, as a bishop um, in this country serving the sri ramalingara catholic faithful mm -hmm. is how to keep our youth close to the heart of the church that's the biggest challenge in your vision pilave uh, and based on your experiences till today and especially you've been also uh, worked um, hand in hand with uh, a lot of the priests in north america in in this period of transition when we are moving from strictly using the malayalam language for our divine liturgy into english how much of a welcome has the youth given and have you uh, seen more participation from the young adults uh, in north america because of the transition from malayalam to english and in your vision uh, what do you have what do you see towards the future uh, it is my conviction that when we cater to the pastoral needs of our youth we have no other choice than to use english because they are born in the in this culture and they grow in this culture and and as far as far as they are concerned the only language that is relevant is english okay. malayala may be relevant to the first generation malankara mm -hmm. in america but when we focus uh, our pastoral apostolate on the youth we have no other choice so gradually we have to shift to english mm -hmm. in all our uh, pastoral services all our liturgy all our other celebrations english has to be the medium and we have uh, initiated a very ambitious project of translating all our liturgical books and all our books or liturgy for the feast days major feast days okay Uh, giving english translation so the other day we published uh, for the first time an official holy missal mm -hmm. in malankara right in english okay so some other translations are underway and i think that has to be accomplished as early as possible and we are given priority to that and to your qu question whether the youth welcome it it's no doubt okay 
it's 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 a, it's fundamental yes. it's existential for them okay because they cannot participate in a liturgy uh, the language of which is not known to them yeah so that's that's a pastoral requirement okay. and in today's environment you know when uh, parents face this difficulty of contradiction where uh, children are being taught one aspect of the faith the Uh, the faith as practiced in the catholic church in the families but the children go out into and, and they watch secular media they live within the secular culture and they face a contradiction out there they come back home and they ask the parents why this contradiction how are we to fit in this contradiction now based on the history of our church based on the faith of our church what would be some practical suggestions that you can give um as our bishop to the parents uh, uh, in this continent the context to which you just mentioned uh makes our responsibility all the more serious in the sense uh the world in which our young people our children our youth are growing is over secularized mm-hmm. religious values do not uh, get much attention so the responsibility of the parents and of the pastor and of the parish community is all the more uh, grave and deeper mm-hmm. so i think to to combat this onslaught of a counter culture and influence we have to give more emphasis on the faith formation in families mm-hmm. and in the context of a parish communities there's no other way so if 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 our, if our children and youth uh, get a very strong foundation uh, from the family in faith and in religion i think that's the only way so we have a very very big responsibility uh, in giving faith formation to our children and families and through a catechetical apostolate and through the parish community even with regards to the catechism that's going on in our various parishes i'm grateful to god that we have a very effective uh, catechism very lively catechism sessions in almost every parish um, in our exarchate um one of the questions which uh, the young adults and the children ask is they're usually attracted to this sola scriptura method of catechism where they would say many a times learning about the bible alone mm-hmm. is of what is interest to them because they feel that's the only thing that would give them um, um help in the future but uh, we as grown up adults know that the church does not exist on mm-hmm. sola scriptura there is magisterium of the church there is sacraments there is faith in the church so from a ca- catechism perspective what would be your suggestions to provide a balanced education to our children how what would be your recommendations to the catechism teachers the pastors and the different parishes the uh, catholics in in our church as a whole mm-hmm. to provide this balanced education to them the ministry that our catechism catechism teachers are doing is uh very very crucial and uh, that is one of the most important ministries of the church uh, imparting faith to the young generation and as far as the malangere catholic church is concerned uh, we have a, an identity of our own uh, which is as far as the spirituality is concerned is very very ancient Uh, liturgical tradition spiritual tradition one of the most ancient in the world mm-hmm. and uh, as as grew up uh, in the indian culture mm-hmm. we have the values of the indian culture yes and as being lived in america with the values of the american culture yes so it is not an easy task mm-hmm. the 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 faith that we impart on our children has to take into consideration 
all these aspects the antiochian malankara indian american values okay. so it's it's a it's a very very a difficult task mm-hmm. uh, we have to bring in a beautiful combination of a faith of a heritage of a culture we have a incidentally we have a bulletin for the exarchate the name of which is symbiosis of faith heritage and culture that just you know highlights our ecclesial task here so sola scriptura scriptura is uh, you know that i i don't subscribe to that mm-hmm. because uh, even scripture is formed in the tradition yes. it didn't just you know uh, it it was not ju- it didn't just come as it as, as it was mm-hmm. it is something which formed in the in the tradition of the church okay so tradition heritage scripture all these have to be taken into account and our faith formation has to consider all this i have to give importance to all this so what we need is a, is is a catechetical project which you take into consideration consideration all these aspects we have books prepared catechism books for our own church which in fact taken all these uh, aspects into consideration for, for but from an indian context so our challenge in the exarchate is to incorporate into it the american north american uh, cultural background also or we have to adapt these texts into the culture in which we live we haven't yet started doing anything on this mm-hmm. but that is in our priority list so give shape to catechetical texts uh, which are relevant to the children and youth who are receiving faith formation in this continent in this country now with divine grace and under your apostolic leadership the sir malakara catholic church of north america is excited and proud to have two deacons yes. uh, from amongst the children who were born and brought up over here and it's my understanding that there are yet more seminarians yes. in formation um my i have two questions on this aspect one how many do we have in total and the second is with them undergoing their priestly formation here in north america uh sirumalagra catholic church has the heritage of eastern monasticism uh th- you know through the bethany ashram which uh marivanus pitava taught us how much are we able to blend when 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 uh, our children are doing their priestly formation here in north america how effectively can we blend this eastern monast- monasticism into them and how is the priestly formation going and what is your vision into the future yes as you said one of the greatest blessings of this uh, infant exarchate mm-hmm. is the fact that we have uh, four excellent young men uh, information to become priests wow. two of them have been already ordained deacons and we hope in a year's time they could be ordained priests wow. and we have two more seminarians just starting their theology this year wow. and all four are excellent uh, candidates for priesthood mm-hmm. and to your second question uh, how in this culture Uh, we could promote uh, the the specificity of the malankara uh, tradition and uh, heritage mm-hmm. spirituality yes and surprisingly i have been involved in priestly training almost all my priestly life so far yes almost for 20 years i taught in seminaries surprising and in india mm. surprisingly these four seminarians it's no exaggeration show a very genuine uh, attachment and inclination towards the eastern spirituality and the values of the eastern spirituality a liturgical tradition so it could be because you know in a culture where there is lot of threat to such values mm-hmm. when people come up with a divine call to Uh, live for the uh, 
spiritual tradition in which they are born uh, they take it more seriously they tend to make it more take it more seriously i think that could be the reason so this so that i think that is not a problem if if they are convinced they will stand for it and that and that is how they can be a witness to a different culture yeah to different values so we are very happy about all the four seminarians and we hope and we pray that we have more yes god will provide yes post um, second vatican council the church has seen uh, more of the lay people coming into the uh, realm of gospel evangelization and with the assembly uh, the suramangra catholic church has had in trivandrum uh, the apostolate towards the formation of a suvishesha sankham has also begun what do you, what do you think about the formation of a lay apostolate here in north america do you think there is relevance here and what would be your a uh, future vision into involving the lay people the lay faith feel in helping the priests and uh, yourself mm-hmm. in in this gospel evangelization according to me one of the positive changes uh in the recent history of our church is the interest that lay people show not in living the faith but in powerfully directly witnessing to it or uh, doing direct evangelization okay. so we have a lo- lot of excellent lay missionaries mm-hmm. i think that is the need of the hour okay. the mission work cannot be confined restricted only to priests or religious especially in the time in which we live mm-hmm. where we have such a shortage of vocation so as baptized christians and catholics we have to take Uh, on our shoulders the responsibility of uh, spreading the gospel and so it's extremely extremely relevant there's no question about the relevance and okay. the question about question is about how to form, the, form them mm-hmm. and how to make it a you know how to how to execute it and as a new exarchate we have started any concrete projects on this mm-hmm. but we have to be doing it you know the malagira catholic church back in india has already taken some very important steps in this regard mm-hmm. they formed a very seriously a suvishesha sankham mm-hmm. in the in the catholic church there is already a department for that an office for that certain people are assigned with this task uh, in the exarchate we have been been able to do anything because of our other limitations and constraints here mm-hmm. but this has to be also another pastoral priority and a lot of people in this in in the in the church in this country now a church in this country mm-hmm. who are really interested in in this and who will be coming most willingly forward to do this okay. and uh, i i think we should we should uh, take advantage of their goodness and this urgency of this um, apostolate we are just at the close of the 8th suramangra catholic convention yes. for north america It just closed in new york yesterday um i myself participated in the convention and even during the time when you had mailed the schedule of the convention it was so evident that it is going to be a very spiritually enriching convention and we are all grateful to you to have you know organized such a spiritual uh, convention what inspired to give you so much of a spiritual bent to it and at the close of the convention what would be your remarks you know and when you turn back and look mm-hmm. at it what would be your remarks planning a convention of this sort requires a lot of energy and a lot of resources so people really spend a lot of their time energy money to participate in such a convention mm-hmm. so i personally thought and not only i the whole team which planned it and uh, executed it it should be worthwhile it cannot be simply a social gathering mm-hmm. when uh, you know when we consider the amount of time and resources spent for it mm-hmm. so it has to be worthwhile and uh, we had this convention uh, in a very important uh, time of our life namely the holy father declared declared it's the year of faith mm-hmm. so we thought we have to focus 
you know, the whole convention on the theme of faith. So we planned in such a way that this convention should enhance our faith, help us to grow in our faith. So that's how, uh, with that in view, we planned, we, we planned the whole program. Mm -hmm. We chose the speakers and we, we, we planned the whole, 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 whole items in the, in the convention. So it, we, 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 we were concerned that it, has, it had to be uh, worthwhile coming together, not just a social gathering. Yeah. So only once in three, three, three years we gather, when we go back, there should be, we, should, we should be going back enriched spiritually. Yes. Yeah. I think that way, uh, I'm, I'm very, very satisfied with this year's convention. Uh, in fact, uh, this is the first convention I attended mm -hmm. and I had the chance of planning also mm -hmm. this convention. And I'm very happy. Uh, in fact, everything went according to our planning. Yes. And large, uh, compared, uh, compared, in, compared to the number that we have in America, it was a large gathering, Malangara gathering. More yes. than 800 people participated. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a big teamwork. And in my evaluation, in every respect, this convention was a big blessing. Yes. And we are thankful to God. And we are thankful to our people here. We are thankful to all those who, you know, spend their time and energy for planning and executing it. I'm very sure the participants felt it too. Yes. And they're lo looking forward to the next one. Um, in today's day and age, you know, the secular media which we watch and which our children watch is taking a lot of effort and spending a lot of resources into teaching the future generation um, various aspects that is secular in nature, mm -hmm. often very contradictory to the faith in the Catholic Church. Shalom Media is working hard to provide them with a different approach, teaching them the Catholic faith, and more than anything else, trying to uh, grow love towards the Church in them. At this juncture, when Shalom Media is attempting to um, uh, uh, telecast uh, programs in English, what would be your comment uh, uh, towards these efforts of shallow media? First of all, I should express my deep appreciation for the wonderful and unique ministry that shallow media is doing. The way it is done, so many volunteers inspired purely by the love of God, love for the church, committed to this ministry, and by God's great biggest blessing, they have been extremely su successful in doing this. And I'm sure Shalom has made a difference, not only in Kerala, mm -hmm. also in America. And uh, the, the, the new venture that they are entering into is extremely relevant. Mm -hmm. This is the age of media, high tech, communication, information technology, in such a world we can win people to faith only by using these facilities. So I think it's very important, very relevant, and I wish God's blessings on this new endeavor. Uh, and I'm sure that the way, the spirit in which the Shalom uh, ministers are working, mm -hmm. definitely it is going to be a success. Because it is not for any personal glory or for any other benefit. It is purely out of, you know, love for Jesus. And such a ministry cannot but succeed. I think at this point we'll conclude with your final apostolic message and blessings to the viewers of uh, Shalom TV here in North America. We thank you for all the guidance that you're giving us, your leadership, and especially the concern for the coming generation, the concern you have for the coming generation. And it's no doubt that the young adults, they are listening to you. They are listening to every word that you have to say. And you speak to their heart. You don't speak to their mind. You don't speak to our, but you speak to our heart. And then that creates a lot of difference. We thank you for your guidance. And I think we'll wind up with your apostolic message and blessings. Thank you, Rajesh, for the interview. And to the viewers of Shiloh Media, I send my best wishes, my, my prayers, and let us support 
the wonderful ministry that Shalu Media is doing, we are the beneficiaries. We benefit a lot through this ministry. The Shalu Media helps us to get closer to God, to get deeper in our faith, and to become holier. Let us promote this wonderful ministry. We are going to be the beneficiaries. I wish Shalu Media all the best, and I wish God's blessing on Shalom Media and on all the viewers and supporters of Shalom Media. May Almighty God bless us all. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit.